Good morning, everybody. Um, you've got to offer a greeting, haven't you? I've got no idea of knowing what time you're watching this video, so who knows whether it's morning or not. But anywho, good morning. It's morning somewhere on planet Earth. Um, in my last video, I did an introduction to the project where we're going to turn river water into drinking water and water that we can shower and wash clothes in. Uh, two separate water tanks, a 50 litre drinking water tank and a 100 litre shower slash clothes washing tank. Uh, and the reason that there was two separate tanks is first of all there's two different grades of water, drinking water and water that's not as pure but certainly good enough to shower in. Um, and the reason for the volume differences, 50 litres versus 100 litres, is our reverse osmosis filter processes water at 2 to 1 ratio. For every one litre of drinking water it makes, it makes two litres of water that we can use for the shower. Um, we need to heat that water uh, for the purposes of all the pots that I make on a Sunday. Uh, Pixie is smiling. All the pots I make on a Sunday when uh, I do a Sunday roast at the kitchen sink, but also for the purposes of the shower and the washing machine, I need to heat water as well. Um, wind's getting up a little bit today. So I've got a hot water solution. I, I put a video out ages ago, which is on the video actually, which is one about the Truma water heater, and I've junked that. Uh, I've junked that for a few reasons. Uh, I thought it was expensive for what it was. Um, you can only really use it with submersible pumps, um, and it didn't hold its temperature particularly well. Once you put heat in it, it'd soon cool down. Um, so we've got rid of that, and we've gone down the route of using these bad boys. Now this, <laughs> people are going to watch this, and uh, after the water filter one, and uh, decide that everything that we bought is very big and very heavy and, and that's, that's true unfortunately. Um, this is a 15 litre chlorifier tank. So it's a copper tank and I'll chat you through what's happening here. We have got a cold water inlet. So this will be our drinking water. This will go for the kitchen sink. Cold water inlet here, hot out here. Now to prevent you from scalding yourself because these tanks, the water temperature internally can get up to, I believe, about 85 degrees on occasions. So you don't want that water that hot coming out of here. So this is a thermostatic mixer valve. And what this does is it takes cold, mixes it with hot to a desired temperature so that you can't hurt yourself, which I think is a, a really clever idea. Uh, as well as that, we've got a coil, okay? Now, if we were using just this one tank, we could hook this up to either something like a Wabasto water heater or a Wabasto um, air heater um, or uh, in this instance our engine. So our engine heat is circulated through a coil. So it doesn't mix the waters. This is like a copper pipe that runs all the way inside and, and wiggles. I'll put a diagram up so you can see. I'll put a cross section up of a chlorifier tank. So they never mix, so the fact that there's antifreeze and coolant going in and coming out here and drinking water going in there, it's perfectly safe to do so because they're always separated. In addition to engine heat, we have an element here. Um, to be fair, this is a lot like the central heating tanks that we've all been ripping out houses for years to replace for a combi boiler. Well, this is bringing it back, the reason being if we're on a long journey, there's no reason why we can't get the water temperature up in these tanks to 85 degrees, and then it'll stay like that for a good little while. Um, the other advantage of having a sm much smaller quantity of water than you uh, at a higher temperature is it kills off nasties. So rather than having a 50 litre tank that you heat to 40 degrees, okay, you're better off having a tank half that size that you heat to twice that temperature to kill off all the nasties and then just mix it with cold to make it the desired temperature. So let me show you. Sorry if my eyes dart everywhere. There's, it's quite a busy part of Castleton where we're at here and there's always people having a nosy as to what we're doing. So, <laughs> it's just I'm unfit. It's not that it's heavy at all. <laughs> this is the 30 litre tank. Let me just drop that there. 
This is the 30 litre tank that we're going to use for our shower. And this is the one that's going to be directly coupled to the engine through this loop here. So once the engine's up to temperature, I flick a button on the dashboard and then the coolant that would ordinarily go through, say, the heater matrix to make the inside of the van warm in the cab will then be diverted into car, around the coil and then out through the car. And uh, by process of the fact that that water is going in hot, it'll help warm up the water that's in here. When this tank is up to temperature, I can then activate something that will then activate the second coil pump, which connects the two tanks. We can't try and heat all the water in one go, because that's too big a task for the engine. So we'll let the engine get up to temperature, then we'll let it heat this tank, then we'll let it heat this tank. So that's how we're getting it from engine heat. Ugh. But there's more. We can also heat the water in these tanks using electricity. I can't open a box. <laughs> it comes with a 240 volt element as standard. I'm going to remove them and replace them with this. This is a DC uh, element and an AC element. So let me get this right. This is 300 watts on DC and 750 watts on AC. I'm sure I've got this right. So if I'm hooked up to mains power, shore power, um, campsite connection, generator, any, any electrical source like that, I'll be using the AC element, the high power element, to bring these tanks up to temperature. If we're using the battery to battery, if our batteries are full and we're driving down the road, as well as heat energy, we can, using our MBC, engage a relay that will then activate the DC. So we'll be sticking 300 watts of electric power into the tanks as well. So that's for both tanks. So that'll be part of the interesting thing. And then there's a, there's a project that's kind of part solar and part this one. So I'll tease that in this video in that we're going to activate something called a solar dump, okay? And on our Victron 50 amp solar charge controller, there's the facility, when the batteries are either full or nearly full, rather than then the solar panel sitting there doing absolutely nothing, we can have it so that these elements turn on, the DC elements. So in effect, excess energy created by the sun uh, collected by our solar panels will be dumped into the tanks via these elements to make the water in the tank hotter. So um, that should be good fun, getting all that set up. Uh, sounds really complicated. It should be almost set and forget it. By the time we've got that up and running successfully, and it's tested successfully, that should just be an automated process. We shouldn't need to interact with that at all. So there we are. Oh. Just to add into the mix, if anyone's interested in these tanks, um, I purchased them from Camper Interiors. There's a guy called Kevin at Camper Interiors. My shopping experience for these Calorifier tanks from Shawcal was miserable. I almost gave up in the end. Uh, I contacted half a dozen Shawcal dealers and they were atrocious. Really poor at getting back to me about my inquiry. I know there's something called COVID, every business has to deal with COVID, but when I was at Richer Sounds, we had usually a product range of about 1,500, project, uh, 1500 products that we were expected to have a very good knowledge of, and they changed all the time. Most of these companies that I've been dealing with have 200 products, and they don't know their backside from a banana with them, literally couldn't answer basic questions. So I was about for giving up. And then I did a bit of a Google search and to my surprise, Camper Interiors came up and I picked up the phone, spoke with Kevin and he just got out all the answers. He'd obviously installed them himself personally. He got knowledge of the project, the products, um, and it was really, really, really helpful. Even down to the fact that when you're heating a large volume of water like this, you need an expansion tank. Water in the system, which can't be compressed, is going to expand. So for the large tank, he said, you need to get yourself one of them, 
which is the five litre. But <laughs> the old Truma heater was a five litre. <laughs> so that's as big as the old Truma heater was. So that's the expansion vessel for that one. And this baby one, the two litre, is the expansion vessel for that one. That is a question. That and can we use these elements that normally reside in a much smaller motorhome inspired shore cal chlorifier tank? Can we can we use that? And no one could answer my questions and Kevin just answered them straight off the bat. So again, I'm not affiliated. You're probably blissfully unaware that I've got a YouTube channel. Um, but I just thought I'd give him a mention there because uh, he was really, really helpful with that. So there we are. Part two of this, no doubt, will be, again, the testing phase. Everything that I've just said is based on maths and theory. Uh, and as we know with some of these things, once you actually start using them, they're a little bit different than you anticipated. So I'm going to do a testing up video. Then there'll be an install video. And then finally, I suppose, there'll be a kind of, this has been a massive error, a total calamity and an, one of the most expensive mistakes we've ever made. Or, this is going swimmingly and you should all do it, uh, video. I don't know which it's going to be yet, obviously. Uh, but we'll put all these videos together in a playlist. Um, I hope you uh, benefit uh, from my mistakes. Now, if there's any pointers I can give you along the way, I will do. But uh, thanks ever so much for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.